Welcome back to my channel everybody. I have a slightly different video for you today but I want to answer some common creative questions that I get asked and I'm also going to show you how I edit some of my interior photos to make them a nice and bright and editorial looking. I just realised I had coffee before I did this and I feel like there's coffee on my cheek. My, my coffee moustache. <laughs> right, I have some notes. I'm gonna break this up into sections. I'm gonna start off with what camera I use because that's the most common question I get asked is what camera do I use? But it's a question that I'd be reluctant to answer, not because I don't wanna recommend you a camera, it's because a lot goes into a picture that's not just a camera. There is lighting, editing, the setup, and I wouldn't want someone to see a picture I have taken and then buy the camera thinking they're gonna get the same results because there is techniques and methods that go into it. So I'm gonna start off with camera chats. So I use a Canon 6D Mark II and I have two lenses that I use. The lens that I'm using now is what I use for like portrait pictures and it gives you this lovely blurry background that is a 50 millimeter it's I'm actually reading the lens out it's a 1.4 it's a USM not an STM if you are filming an STM is better because you can hear the lens autofocus in this one. So I have to be careful not to move too quick or it'll pick up on the autofocus. I do have an external microphone on this as well. You do not need a fancy camera to get into YouTube or blogging at all. I started off with my phone and it wasn't even an iPhone. Like you're talking six years ago and it was like, the iPhone 4S, which had awful camera on it. And for like a year, I was using that. I then upgraded, I'll actually grab it, I still have it. I upgraded to an Olympus pen probably five years ago. So I invested, I remember I got my first like paid job and I spent it, well, it didn't even cover the cost of a camera, but I put it towards the camera. And the Olympus pen is an amazing beginner's camera. And I had two lenses. I had the 45 millimeter lens, which gave me lovely portrait photos. And then I had a 17 millimeter lens, which was great for vlogging. The only one problem with this camera is the autofocus is dreadful for filming. Beautiful photography camera. I got some amazing shots. I think I brought this to Dubai. It's been to many places and I got some really great pictures on this. It's lightweight. Great to travel with. I do recommend it. The other downfall is the flip out screen flips out to the bottom. When you have a tripod and you do what I do, you need a side or an up screen. So that's the one flaw in this, but this is an old model. This is the PL7. I know they have gotten like way newer models. And um, so hopefully they have fixed that problem. Like I said, you don't have to upgrade your camera. There are so many people who are doing brand deals on iPhones and Samsungs and Huawei phones that have really good cameras. However, I prefer an actual glass lens and that's why I invested in my camera and I'm gonna explain why I picked this one. I picked the Canon and especially the 6D over the 5D because I needed a camera that was really good with video and was also like a professional level camera as well to take photographs. Um, again, you don't need this. The reason why I went with the 6D was because it has a side flip out screen. Because I do a lot of filming, I need to be able to make sure I'm in focus when I'm chatting to the screen. That was the bane of my life with my old camera. I would film a section and the autofocus wouldn't work and I'd have to reshoot it. So if you are wanting to get into YouTube and videos, getting something with an autofocus, a good entry level Canon, and I've played around with this camera, is the M50. It is, I think you might get it for around the 500 mark. I played with this at a Canon event like two or three years ago. Really good autofocus on it. I think you can change the lenses as well. Also, I'm not sponsored by Canon. I paid cash for my camera. Um, my camera is, you're looking at about two to two and a half grand. 
and um, so it is a big investment but you will get return on it because the quality of your work is going to improve another camera that is good for just vlogging you will see a lot of vloggers using the Canon G7X there's lots of like um, newer versions this is really good I think Mr Carrington uses it Lydia Lee Smillin uses a picture really good autofocus great for filming I personally don't like it for photography because you can't get the depth of field not like you would with like interchangeable lenses um, I like to invest in a new lens and picking a new lens like I really want an 85mm next I think but that's the one reason why I'm not as mad on it but it has its perks it's lightweight you can travel with it um, great vlogging camera because um, the downside of the camera I'm using now is it's quite big and it's quite heavy even though I do travel with it. If you ask me for a camera recommendation I won't give you one because I'm not an expert and they are a high ticket item and I done so much research when it came to cameras and there's obviously boxes your needs might be different to mine I needed something that was really good with both video and photography if you are just into photography then you may be able to get like different options Canon 5D might be a good one I know a lot of people who use Sony as well I have no experience with Sony cameras and Nikon as well I have done some photography walks with photographers when I'm traveling and they have used um, one of the guys had a Nikon I don't even know if I'm saying that right um, and he got amazing photos but do your research there is tons on the market my best advice is actually go to a camera shop with your research items, narrow it down to like three or four and ask can you play with the cameras and just see, you know, can you just test this, see what it feels like and then pick whichever one is right for you. When it comes to the likes of Instagram stories and I think I just use a camera on this for that. It's rare I will upload a phone taken photo to my blog or Instagram feed because I will use my camera. My camera has a Wi-Fi function so I can shoot a camera a photo on this camera, turn on the Wi-Fi function and instantly download it to my phone without having to do any wires and stuff. So when I'm traveling all of my travel shots will be taken on this camera and then I will wire the, like Wi-Fi them to my phone, quick edit and then upload. So some other equipment to keep in mind, again, you don't need this, you can also do some DIY tripods as well. So when it comes to tripods, I actually always end up going back to my Amazon Basics tripod. I do have mini tripods for traveling. I've yet to find the perfect tripod. I have a Gorilla Pod that I spent, I think, £150 on. I rarely use it. Um, I must actually sell that on. I always go back to this. Amazon 20 pound tripod. I'll put a link to it in the description and um, tripods are obviously great for video They're great for travel. I don't bring this one traveling because it's too heavy I bought a mini one that I took this shot on when I was in Switzerland um, But it is only a half and you have to get creative with putting it on like Tree tops or adjusting it kind of shoots from below you'll have to use like tables um, You can get creative with it, um, but it is lightweight and it's easy to travel with this applies to people who want to get into video do if you get especially Canon are known for not having good internal microphones so I have a Rode VideoMic Pro I bought this late last year for when I was filming my sewing course I wanted to have really good quality audio and um, so I invested in a microphone you can get much cheaper options than the VideoMic Pro and um, you can get ones for like £50 um, for that lower tickets um, I just wanted to invest in a good one I want to have a brief chat about video editing and what I use um, you could do a whole workshop on video editing but what I basically use is I use a MacBook Pro because I needed something that could process video quickly the Mac um, the Apple Mac Air and um, didn't have the speed so I went for the Pro. The Pro also has the retina screen so when it comes to photography and being creative you have a sharper screen so the cheaper smaller it's I think it's due with the memory you want like bigger 
Um, I definitely recommend the Pro versus the other MacBooks. And I use, to edit my videos, I use Adobe Premiere Pro. And I've been using that for the last year. Initially, it was hard to learn. I did a one day workshop in London on like how to basically get started. And then I had to just practice. Um, I started using iMovie. iMovie is so easy to use and you can do loads with iMovie. So if you are starting, you want to dip your toe in video editing, you can check out iMovie. And I know Adobe has a easier version of Premiere Pro. Um, I can't remember the name, but it's similar to iMovie in that it's like place your clips. Um, add in sound, text, like it does the basic stuff. I used iMovie for years and it served me well. I did professional work on iMovie. The reason why I upgraded Premiere Pro was just because I wanted to learn and I wanted to learn different, I, there is still loads I want to learn with it, like motion graphics and things like that. So that is what I use to edit and roughly it can take a 10 to 15 minute video, could probably take about three to four hours to edit. So just something to keep in mind if you are um, wanting to kind of get into YouTube videos and all of that good stuff. So MacBook Pro and Premiere Pro, but use iMovie to get started. Self shooting. I photograph myself. I've probably only ever used a photographer a handful of times. Maybe if I'm working with a brand and they have a budget that I can pay a photographer, but generally I will shoot myself. And I obviously generally mostly do it from home because I've got nice backdrops if I do say so myself. And like I said, my Canon has a Wi-Fi feature. So I set up the tripod and I test a few shots with like backgrounds and how, you know, it's gonna look. On my phone, there is a Canon app. This Canon app allows me to see myself in the shot. This makes taking photos so much quicker. And if you are a bit like me and when a photographer shoots you and you might not like the shot, but you're too polite to say you don't like it, <laughs> you don't have that because girl is with you and your tripod. Um, so I generally, yeah, if a brand, I haven't done any fashion kind of things um, recently, but generally I will self shoot and that saves so much money. So one thing I recommend with cameras is do you get something that has the Wi-Fi function and that you can use your phone as a remote viewer? I can hit the self timer on my phone and then generally I'll just place my phone on the bed, on the floor and um, or even like just behind depending where my hands need to be and um, that's how I take my own photography and I've been doing that like since the beginning and um, I've given up on getting an Instagram boyfriend. I don't think I'd want a husband to take my photos anyway. <laughs> Lighting, uh, just a quick one on lighting. I don't use any. I don't use artificial lighting because I don't like the, not that I don't like, sorry. I'm not experienced in getting the right tone and consistencies. Um, I know artificial light, you can, I don't have the patience. It can be blue, it can be warm, it can be, no. Your girl uses what God gives her. <laughs> I use the natural light. It goes against me in winter though. Um, it is something I'll have to look at in winter. In winter, because it gets dark by four o'clock here, it doesn't get bright in the mornings. You literally have 11 till 3 p.m. to get any decent light. Maybe 10 some mornings, um, but generally it's quite gray in Ireland in winter. So um, I might like invest in lighting. If you are like a beauty, YouTuber type thing, I could totally understand why you would invest in lighting. But for what I do, I don't need it. I just use Oh Naturel. So now we are going to edit some photos. We are gonna to go to my laptop and I am going to film my screen and we are gonna edit a interior picture from start to finish and generally kind of what I do. Screen record with audio and I hope it works. So I have just opened up Lightroom, which is by Adobe and it's one of their editing products. They also do Photoshop. So in this, I'm going to use Lightroom. Here is the before picture, and this was taken on my Canon, and it was on a 50 millimeter lens.
So I'm gonna go to the sidebar and I literally go through each of these in steps. I actually don't really use these ones, I use the top one. First thing I'm gonna do is adjust the lighting. So I want to bump it up. A little tip, when you are shooting candles, they can absorb the light. So this, you want to make it look like it was when you, in real life. So what it looked like when you took the photo. So I'm gonna bump up the exposure, but you have to be careful because you lose details. I try and not go too far. So on this slider over here, and just bumping it up, but I don't wanna lose too much. So I'm gonna go back a bit. Um, let me see if bring down the highlights. Sometimes brings back a bit of detail. I'm gonna bring up the shadows a little bit. There's already a lot of whites here. The blacks, you can play around with this. If you want a really hazy look, you can bring the blacks up. Or if you wanna get a bit more contrast, I wanna bring out the detail of the bottle, so I'm gonna bring the blacks down. Contrast. A little bit, and then I'm just gonna bump up a tiny bit of exposure. So here, from just adjusting the light, Here's the before, as you can see it's quite dark. And here's an after, now I think that is a tiny bit too bright. So as you can see, I have lost a little bit of detail. So that is light, I'm gonna just close that box. Now, color, here's where you can experiment and add in some color and a bit of detail. Temperature, I tend, I never bring it down to the blue tone, like you can bring it down and up. I add a tiny bit of warmth. Here you can see some markers. I generally keep it between like zero, 10 would be the max. I'm just gonna give this a little bit of warmth. I'm gonna leave it at four. Now, the color mixer is my favorite tool, but you have to be careful because here is where you can make your picture look unrealistic. So for example, you may see people, I used this to add a pink hue, but for example, this is where people put like turquoise skies on their travel pictures. So they change the color. So basically the color mixer. So for example, with the yellow tone, if there's a lot of, a lot of yellow in my picture, I'll bring this down. So straight away you can see I've gotten this like pink hue to my pictures, which I love. But you have to be careful because I like to keep my pictures looking as realistic as possible. So this tray in real life is rose gold and coppery, but in the picture, it's looking more gold. So I can take it down a little bit. You can also bring up the luminance as well. So as you can see, that's making it brighter or darker. So tiny bit of luminance. You can also bump up saturation or take it, the color away altogether. I'm not gonna to touch saturation, I'm gonna leave that there. Another thing I like to do is, with the tan color, if it's an interior picture, if this is a portrait, you have to be careful with the tan because you can make yourself look pink, which we don't wanna do. So you can bring it down. As you can see, you're getting some unrealistic pink tone here, or you can bring it up to the green. So let's just give it a tiny bit of pink. And you can also give it a pop of luminance, but you don't wanna lose color. So, before, after. So now, we are gonna go to, right, I'm gonna close the color mixer. Texture, so, I wanna put a bit of sharpness back into my picture. So, by adding some texture, I can sharpen it up and bring back some of the detail that I had lost. Now, I'm just gonna take it down a notch. But when I bumped up the brightness, I lost some detail. So by doing the texture, I've put that back in. Um, the grain, you can get some cool vintage effects. So see the way it's bringing up all of the grain. Um, I've seen people do that, but it's nice for like fashion photography, but if you want a vintage look, bring up the grain and you'll get that look. Um, Dehaze, don't use it as much. 
like if you want to get that kind of hazy look on your pictures tends for me to make it look in unrealistic clarity as well if you see people using really sharp imagery that is the clarity that they're using personally I try and not use it if you are going to use it try and stay within zero to plus ten we're almost there um, this is really quick to do noise reduction and color noise I don't really use these because I use the texture um, you can add in sharpness but I find texture is better so I don't really use the detail on an interior picture next thing we're gonna do is oh actually I want to show you a little trick back to the color mixer see these flowers so let's go to pink if you wanted to they become purple or they become more um, warm toned. So just something you can do, pop it up there, give it luminance, take it down. So just, you can take the saturation down on them or you can bump it right up. Um, that's looking a little bit fake. So let's just bring that down. So that's the flowers there originally. So we can give them, pop them up a little bit. A little bit of luminance. Yeah, so let's go before and after. Last thing I wanna do is crop it for Instagram. Instagram is 8.5 times 11. I find that's the nicest shape. You can also, you can do a 4.5 and an eight by 10, but this one here, I find performs the best on Instagram. So I'm gonna hit enter. So here is my picture edited nice and bright editorial for Instagram or your blog or whatever you need to. So last time here is before and here is after. I'm going to hit file and oh sorry I'm going to go up here and I'm going to export this as large. This will save to my documents folder on the Mac and I will airdrop it to my iPhone. So let us send this, export, and up here you can see it's sending. You can also this do this on the mobile version of Lightroom. And that is my picture. Hope you found this useful. So I hope you got a bit of insight in to my creative, how would you say? My creative weapons. My weapons of creativity. I can get a lot of questions on daily, like what camera do I use, what editing, what this, but what I will say to you is, it doesn't matter what software, what camera you are using, it's what you actually do with it. There's so much you can do with basic editing stuff. Like before I use Lightroom, I used the inbuilt editor on my MacBook and I just adjusted the brightness. So sometimes, and this might sound harsh, sometimes people wait and I know I have done it. I will do this when I have that camera and that's not how it works. Just start creating now. I think sometimes we can be paralyzed by perceived perfection because perfection don't exist. And what can happen is you might watch someone's videos and you might not realize that they've spent the past decade learning them skills and you're comparing yourself against them when really all you need to do is just get started and compare yourself to you last year um, or last month or whatever. So don't be comparing yourself to someone who has, I do it, I see an amazing video and I'm like, oh, how is that edited? And I get like disheartened, but you have to just see where you have come and I find people can make excuses to not create. Oh, I don't have a good camera. Oh, I don't have audio. I don't have blah, blah, blah. Do the best of what you have um, to get you started. Had I have not started my YouTube channel, I would never have gotten the revenue to invest in other like items that have helped me along the way. I hope that makes sense and doesn't sound too ranty, but if you find yourself using equipment as a barrier to not getting into something, maybe relook at that and be like, ooh, this may be fear or something else holding you back. Probably is. Um, perfection, go back to my very first YouTube video. It's gonna be absolutely dreadful compared to 
videos I do now, um, but that just shows growth. And that's what we're after, girls. Creative growth, not perfection. <laughs> There's so much that uh, this whole video I could go on for ages into each topic but if it's something you'd maybe like a mini workshop on it's something I could possibly pull together um, about getting started whether it's you know your blog your websites you know improving your Instagram taking photos there is just I feel like I do have lots of knowledge that I've just been sitting on um, and that I could definitely help people when it comes to that because nearly all of my stuff is self-taught um, I will go to one or two kind of workshops and then how you learn is by doing each week editing your videos, taking your photos, like practice and persistence is really kind of the secret to actually getting a bit decent, do you know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah, let me know if that's something you'd be interested in, whether I do a mini workshop or um, something like that. If this video gave you value, then do please share it, give it a cheeky thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.